guys welcome back to my channel or if you are new here welcome today we are continuing to work on our ephemera folio from trash from junk from an amazon packaging and random junk and today we are going to be making more ephemera so let me just show you what we have so far so we've already made the cover uh, from an amazon envelope and the flap of the envelope is our uh, closure with some velcro then we have a junk mail envelope some pockets here we've made the pages with some pockets and a couple of journaling cards that we we've made yesterday actually from uh, from some a recycled chocolate squishy thing see the video if you're interested then we have four of these cute belly bands these scrappy belly bands i love them so much and i actually thought of another use so they could be used as belly bands they could be used as bookmarks bookmarks but they are also kind of reminding me of like snippet rolls something like this or snippet things <laughs> they are not a roll obviously uh, but you could just cut uh, some pieces off and use them as little tax spot and stuff and these are backed with tea stained paper so they can be even used as some journaling spots so we have those some more pockets that we are going to be filling and another journaling card and another junk mail envelopes here on the back so today I want us to work on some more journaling tags this time and I have this piece left and if you remember from yesterday we cut off the flaps and made the belly bands from them but I was thinking this is nice and thick so I would make some journaling tags out of it and because it's nice and thick I thought we could actually use some mixed media today some easy uh, very basic mixed media of um, whatever we will make um, and yeah and the reason um, I want to use mixed media is first of all I really love playing with with mixed media I want to add a little bit more interest to the ephemera that we are putting into uh, our ephemera folder but I am uh, also very excited to use some new products from Arteza that I have and I want to share them with you so uh, Artiza again were very kind to send me these and to they asked me just to you know test them out work with them play with them and share my honest opinion with you guys so I have their 60 watercolors uh, set and also this 48 empty half pans um, container and this is actually what it looks like uh, so it's nice it's sturdy I love it and it opens up like this so you have some palette here and you have your half pants and I've chosen 48 out of those 60 colors that I love I do believe they also come with 60 I just thought 60 would be just a little bit too much for me to keep at my desk so and these come in tubes so let me uh, forgot how to open this box Oh yeah, it's just opening like this. So they come like this, they are in tubes, so you get so much. Even if I, you know, used a tiny bit of it in my half pans, I still have so much more to use and to play with. And they are amazing, guys. I've already used them. This is not going to be my first time using this, these. I've already played with them. And uh, I have to tell you, I love them. <laughs> I love them. I I am not a professional watercolor artist, so for me to have a large number, a large variety of colors that I don't have to, you know, mix them to create the color that I want, it's absolutely a lifesaver and it makes using watercolors so uh, pleasant for me. So uh, definitely, if you if you like if you're struggling with uh, mixing some of your favorite colors from from the smaller sets that you have definitely uh, do try these and I will have the links for them in the description and just so you know these 
are going to be um, to be um, what's the word Affi affiliate they are going to be affiliate links which means that uh, you uh, when you buy from my link you will share a little bit of commission with me uh, with no additional cost for you which you know which this way you help support me my channel my little business so thank you so much in, in advance and i will have the link both for the amazing container and for the watercolor set so i cleaned the edges here and now i'm thinking i want one bigger tag for one bigger envelope so i think i'm going to make this one maybe nine centimeters or about three and a half inches wide mm -hmm. and i can just cut my uh, my edges here and this packaging is let me tell you how tall it's going to be it's about almost like 17 and a half centimeters and almost uh, exactly seven inches and then I want a couple of smaller ones too because we have some smaller pockets so how about I make them five centimeters or two inches wide and then because we have uh, almost 18 I can make them uh, how how tall maybe I'll just fold it in half almost in half and cut it cut it where I where I fold it mm -hmm. and we will cut our uh, corners and this one ooh, I'm actually going to do something with this one as well since we are using junk and we are not throwing anything away so oops sorry guys so I think I want all of them to be tags so I'm going to cut a corner here and use the same corner just flip it around and use the same corner on the other side so I kind of have them symmetrical mm -hmm. oh and I used I used the wrong corner guys okay I can't have it like that let me I always get it wrong you know for some reason I always get it wrong so this is how it's going to be but that's actually nice because we are going to have some more variety in the tag uh, did I do it wrong no it's okay this time uh, we're going to have a little bit more variety in the tag shape this time so it's nice okay and so the longer, in my case, the longer edge of the triangle goes down. And this way I can remember how I want to, how I want to keep those here. Yeah, I think I'm going to make, is it, yeah, it's, it's not too tall. So I am going to turn this into a tag as well. This is going to be an interesting one. Oops, sorry for my phone. I need to turn off the vibration. It's right beside me. Um, okay. And the big one can have bigger corners. Maybe like this. Just to make sure, yes, the longer um edge again of the triangle goes down like that super so now before we add any mixed media i think i'm going to add my my collaging i want to i want to kind of keep things consistent here so i have some of the same papers that we've already used uh, and I'm thinking I think I have run out of some of those so let me grab my binder my collage papers binder and let me take some more of yeah these 
this writing paper from Taylor Made Journals. It's lovely. And also, this is her gorgeous ledger. Excuse me. Um, I also have some, I think, yes. So I may take maybe one more sheet or two more sheets of these. These are wildflower collage pages from My Porch Prints and I've been using them throughout this project uh, along with her Among Wildflowers kit. And so we have some ledger. Okay, I think that's it and I'm also going to take a piece of book page. A vintage, vintage book page is always good, you know, and I have this gorgeous book page that I shared with you before and uh, it's French and it has an amazing color. It's very thin though, very fragile. Okay. Now, I haven't cleaned my desk yesterday when I finished uh, the project, so I'm kind of, I am kind of running out of space here. And now, I also need to find my tearing ruler. So I had a, a few questions about my tearing ruler, which I will show you guys in a sec. <laughs> This is the one. I got it from Amazon and if you just search for ter ter ruler or tearing ruler, you should find it. Uh, but mine comes from uh, from Joy exclamation mark crafts. That's the that's the brand name uh, that my ruler comes from. And it's amazing. It just it makes tearing uh, and, and getting rid of those straight edges so nice and pleasant and you know just so fun. <laughs> so I'm just tearing a couple of or actually three three pieces here from this. Okay. And I think I'll just start gluing. Or maybe first let me tear a few of those other papers they would be great as as background so i'm going to take a longer piece like this and just tear it a few times to have different sizes different shapes some squarish some some longer uh rectangles mm -hmm. very nice and I really like having a few torn pieces before I actually start collaging because then it just makes it so so much quicker you know when you already have most of the pieces I may be able to I may I may need to um, add some more use some more but maybe it will actually be enough you know and so I can when I'm done with tearing I can just focus on the pleasure of sticking them down and uh, and just collaging I love collaging so thank you so much guys thank you again for all the wonderful comments on on the series i am loving this and it seems that you're loving this as well which is amazing <clears throat> and i'm also loving uh crafting with you so often like i've been crafting uh with you and and posting new videos every day for the past four days i think this one this is going to be this is the day number four and i'm loving it and i actually thought that maybe uh, in 2021 I could, hmm, I could maybe, well, I do want to go full time with my crafting business. You know, I want to give it a real shot, a real, a real chance. So I was thinking of maybe 
sharing videos with you every week weekday uh, i would start my day with some crafting with some filming and then i would do some other projects that i have on my to-do list or you know in my mind so i was thinking i would share videos crafting videos and those would be like you know like this some random projects using trash and making it into treasure making uh, ephemera holders making journals that are going to go to my etsy shop making uh piles of ephemera like mass making uh, those those would be maybe some organization as well those would be videos like this and do let me know if you if you would enjoy it because uh because yes i i really enjoy crafting with you and talking to you and and just the fact that i am turning my camera on kind of motivates me as well motivates me to to actually do something because uh I often get caught up in that there is so much, you know, not interesting things about running your own business, like taxes, like administrational stuff. And um, this way, you know, I can do all of it. I can do all of those, uh, all of those things of course I have to but first my first task so, so to speak of the day would be crafting with you and I mean that would be absolutely absolutely lovely for me so do let me know if you would enjoy having five videos uh, a week from me and I was thinking Monday through Friday or or maybe um or maybe Sunday through Thursday. So I, I think I won't be able, unfortunately, to do seven, but I also would like to kind of maybe for some of you who won't be able to watch every day, maybe you would like just a couple of days, you know, to catch up with the project. So you would have the weekend to catch up. And in the new week, we would start, we would, start again <laughs> i i don't know i'm i'm kind of very excited about this about this idea i really i really am and i would love to know what what is your thought on this mm -hmm. Okay, uh, did I tear any ledger paper? I don't, I don't think so. Maybe I will add this um, or not. Or maybe I have something smaller that I won't have to cut that much. This one uh, or this one. Or I can just tear myself another piece. For those thicker papers, I, I don't believe glue stick is going to hold them very well, so I prefer to use a little bit of this wet glue to hold them down. This is some scraps of Tim Holtz. Just the tiniest scraps that I have. Tim Holtz papers are, uh, are just so beautiful that I really hate <laughs> throwing away even the smallest even the smallest bits okay. i think i'm just going to glue it here and then cut the excess off and maybe use it on another tag so first i'm just making my background i'm collaging different bits and pieces here trying to see what matches what patterns kind of look look nice here now let me cut out the excess then i am going to add some, some 
focal points. I've actually fussy cut some of those flowers that we used yesterday, so I fussy cut some more because I really like them that we used for, for our cards and for our belly bands. And uh, I also want to use, I love it. Isn't it lovely already? I love how when you use just beautiful papers and maybe some vintage ones as well, your collaging just doesn't need much more. Ah, it's gorgeous, so. Okay, so here I think I want to maybe add this piece on the side. like like that and then a little bit of book page here and I am not bothered um, not worried about the fact that I'm gluing the text here upside down because it all just adds adds to the interest that's at least that's you know how I see it I like to mix things up. Mm -hmm. Now let me cut the edges. So I would, yes, I would like to add some stenciling as well with some modeling paste or something like that. We will see. I have a couple of new stencils from AB Studio, which I'm going to show you. And I'm, oh, this is so cute. I love it. Uh, that I would really like to use. Mm, okay, where's my long? Where is my long tag? We have this, these two collaged. Here is the long one, and where is the other small one? Did I already lose it in this mess? No, it's here. Okay. Yeah, I definitely. Probably definitely should have <laughs> should have cleaned my desk from from yesterday's project, but I just figured I'm going to be using the same stuff, the same scraps, the same uh, junky elements. So I just didn't feel like I needed to to really clean it up but now I'm kind of <laughs> I kind of wish I did mm -hmm. so I hope you guys are doing okay uh, a little update from what I said yesterday so I told you yesterday that we are going into the strict lockdown in Poland and that the government is even uh, going to uh, introduce a curfew on um, on the uh, what could I use here? What other papers did I have? Do I have a bit of this Tom Holtz? Mm, sorry, guys, I'm just thinking out loud. Or maybe I love this. I love these borders on this paper. So I'm going to take a piece of this and add it there so yes yeah, so i told you that we are going into the strict lockdown and we are we still are unfortunately um but it turns out that there won't be a curfew turns out that you know there were so many protests over this because a curfew is something that in poland uh, you could only introduce or the government could legally, you know, only introduce during a, I don't know how to say it in English, but like a special time, like war, you know, during war or something like this. And it's obviously not war and uh, it's not this special time now so they can't legally introduce curfew still they wanted to do it and there were so many protests that the prime minister actually said that 
Uh, oh, it wasn't, uh, you know, it wasn't the curfew. We weren't suggesting a curfew. We were just suggesting that you stay at home from 7 to uh, 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. the next morning. So, um, well, of course, they were suggesting curfew. They are just now backing out from it. But that's good because, well, I'm not going anywhere on Christmas or oh, Christmas, New Year's Eve. Did I say Christmas again? Guys, I hope you know I mean New Year's Eve. <laughs> We're not going. We are nowhere near Christmas Eve. <laughs> okay, this is so cute. And the last one. And the last one, which I can't see it again. Here it is. Wow. <laughs> So, um, so yes, I, I'm not planning to go anywhere, but still, it just was so very disturbing, this curfew, the, like, the, the police were, or would be, because they are no longer, but they would be authorized to... Uh, to punish you, you know, with probably a ticket or something for just walking outside and well, I'm glad I won't have to worry about that when I'm walking my dog in the evening. But the situation in Poland, unfortunately, with the government and with People being very upset with the government is not getting better. It's so bad. There are so many protests. It's so sad because, well, I don't believe those protests won't do anything, unfortunately. Um, they are for a good cause or causes. But, but, I mean, I don't think they are going to achieve anything, unfortunately. Okay, and here is my Tim Holtz, so let me use a piece of, of this one. And I'm thinking, I'm going to use wet glue again with this because it's thicker cardstock. Okay. Oops. Mm -hmm. Now my mat is all gluey. <clears throat> okay. So the first step is done. We have we have added our collaged pieces and I think I'm going to just say what I can and um, and just clean my desk from what I can throw out because I'm going to get drowned in scraps here if I don't do that. Okay. Now Let's see what I have. We have two smaller tags, one fun longer tag and one big. And here are the flowers that I have fussy cut from the Among Wildflowers uh, digital kit from the papers. Uh, these are some of those messy flowers like a lot of plants layered together. And I was thinking of adding those, but first, maybe, I just want to um, maybe mute the background a little bit and start preparing it for mixed media. So I'm going to use white gesso and the one I'm using usually is one from Talents. And I'm going to use my finger and I have some green because I was painting recently my some of my covers with green. And I'm going to go over some of the spots here and there to kind of try to blend the the borders between different papers, you know, to blend them together, to add some negative space, uh, which is the white space, space where we uh, don't have anything going on and we can put our 
and flowers there. Well, traditionally my video cut out and I didn't notice until my camera switched off. But I think you've seen me when I've started uh, adding gesso to those with my finger. So here is what our tags look. Now we have some negative space. We have pushed some of these papers to the background and so my uh, my uh, flowers, the, the flowers that I fussy cut from the kit can now stand out a little better. Sorry, I'm just trying to clean my fingers from just a little bit, at least. <laughs> okay. Now, I think I can put on this away. Let me just take a sip of water here, guys. And let's see about those flowers and plants. How about this one is so big. How about this? I like how the, the colors work together here. And then for this one, maybe something Something like this. Uh, could have a couple of those thinner ones as well. Maybe I like the pink on this or a pink on this one because it's taller. And the, then the small one could go here or, or this one. Mm, I like it. I like it. So, and I could have a couple of those flowers here and maybe this one coming from the top why not and then this one we can use for something else so now let me let me quickly glue glue those flowers and do i want to yes i'm going to use my wet glue to glue them and then i am going to go over the the whole thing with my clear gesso and I'm going to do this because I want to prepare this papery surface for adding some water, for adding some wet media. And if you don't have a clear gesso, you can also use a thin layer of white gesso. This here, these um, parts where we already have the gesso, they are already primed, so nothing else needs to be done to them. So you can just add a little bit more of, of, um, of white gesso. Also, if you don't have gesso, I believe uh, a layer of Mod Podge, maybe, you know, something to add another layer uh, to your paper, something that will protect it. Because if we don't do anything and we add our watercolor or water to our tags, we are going to end up with... Um, like the water is going to sink into the papers especially that what i use here are very porous uh, and thin papers copy papers i only have a little piece of cardstock from tim holtz the rest are printed on copy paper and and i also have some of this very thin and very old book which is going to soak water like a sponge guys so you you want to prime your page with something so yes so i believe mod podge maybe gel medium uh, your paint and your water may behave a little differently on gel medium for example than it would on um just so but you're still going to to be protecting your protecting your surface here so i'm now going to take this piece of paper and on the white white uh, side i'm just going to take a paintbrush uh, if i can find something quite thin maybe this one a very cheap paintbrush and i'm going to take clear gesso and i might actually need to open a new 
Oh yeah, this is so dry. So I'll open a new jar. And this uh, clear gesso comes from uh, 13 Arts. Clear gesso, acrylic primer it can be called. And I am just going over the whole thing, priming it. Uh, for our mixed media, wet media, and also kind of gluing all the the pieces again so that if something was coming off of my uh, of my surface here, it's now going to be secured and glued down better. Okay, this one I think is covered. Then let me take another one. This thin one is so cute with the with this unusual shape. I really like it. I don't yet know if I'm going to cut off the parts that are sticking out um, from my tags, the piles of flowers. So I am just in case I'm covering them as well. I can always always cut them out later. And this gesso is such a nice um, texture, like a, like jelly, something like this. And I'm using my paintbrush without adding any water to it. I don't want to water it down and it's thin enough that you can uh, paint over your... Um, Paint over your uh, tags without adding any water. Now I'm going to, <laughs> to put my, my paintbrush in water. Okay, guys, let me uh, dry these quickly and we will see what we can do next with them. Okay, guys, so my tags are dry. I I uh, have this just piece of white paper, copy paper, just to protect, protect my desk surface. They are pretty much dry, you know, dry enough for the next step. And the next step is going to be some stenciling. And here are those stencils that I would love to use. They come from AB Studio. It's a Polish company, but they have uh, the ship internationally. And I have this one. Hope you can see how lovely it is. I've already used this one and I also have this one and I haven't used this yet. So I think I'm going to start with this and add some of it to my, uh, to my big tag here. And what I'm going to use to do this is I'm going to use a spatula like this. You can use a plastic one, a metal one, and I'm going to try to use, I have some of this acrylic primer. So this is again, just soil, but this is a different one that I'm using. And it has some of this more dry and more like um, heavy uh, substance here. And I was thinking maybe I could use this instead of using um, modeling paste. You can use modeling paste, you can use white gesso, you can use uh, clear gesso if you prefer clear patterns. But I'll try to see if I can use this because I have a feeling that because it's so thick, first of all, it will give me, it's very hard to to use actually, but I'm going to try my best. So first of all, it's going to give me a nice texture, but secondly, I just think it may dry a little bit faster and I, I would like that because I don't want to wait a day <laughs> for my gesso to be, uh, to be dry. I honestly just want to, to do it to dry it, uh, to dry it, yes, with my with my heat tool, and and yes, go back to you guys and finish those tags. Okay, so I think this is nice. Maybe just a little bit here, so to make sure it's covered. Okay, let's reveal this. Yeah, it's very thick. Ooh. I love it. I love this stencil. So we have a little bit too much texture, so I'm going to 
maybe oh but this is so gorgeous i think i want maybe just a little bit more here in the corner so let me take let me take some more of this red gesso this is very thick this is a very nice to use with a stencil okay gorgeous i love it stencil is gorgeous and just maybe a tiny bit more uh maybe here mm. i'm trying to maneuver here Oops, so i don't put my my stencil over the parts that i've already covered but i don't think it's doing them anything bad okay i love it so this is the first one then let's see do i want to change the stencil or maybe use the same one on another tag let's try this one maybe oh i know i want to try it like this too little of this so mm -hmm. I am going to to dry it with my heat tool but if you prefer because when you dry when you dry with heating tool your image can sometimes I think I love it the way it is I don't think or maybe just a tiny bit up top there um, it can sometimes, you know, start curling up because of the heat. So you may want to you may want to uh, wait and uh, for it to, to to dry naturally. I guess. Oops. I guess I'm too impatient. Okay, this is so lovely. And don't worry, we are going to be adding some more color to this so it's not going to be this stark uh, white color let me just quickly clean this a little bit okay it's it's already almost dry now the the remaining tags i think i want to go with this stencil i love it so much I love it. If you don't know AB Studio, uh, definitely, definitely check out their products. Oops. This is really dry. I'm, I'm kind of fighting with it because this, what I'm using is really, really dry, but this is what I want to use for my stenciling to, to dry faster. Mm, this is like so hard. Mm -hmm. So if you don't know of AB Studio, then definitely check them out. Not sponsored, not not sponsored at all. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I'm. Let me. Mm -hmm. Let me add some more here because this is a bit too um, thin for my liking. Maybe like this and maybe just a tiny bit here in the, in the corner. Let's see what we have. Yes, really nice, really, really nice. Okay, and the last one. I want to use the same stencil, maybe just a bit here in this corner. Yes. Like that and uh, and then a bit here as well. So I'm going to take take more of this hard, dry, almost dry stuff and add it. I need to get some very heavy gesso for this because I don't have all of my gessos are quite thin and liquidy. 
gorgeous okay guys so let me very quickly uh, wash my stencil now that our tags are dry and I honestly love what we have here we can finally play with some of the watercolors and again I am using the Arteza watercolors and uh, you will find the link in the description box so first let me see what colors I would like to use here I think um, definitely some purple. So I have just a bottle of water and I'm going to spray those purples and pinks to activate them. What else? Uh, some yellows. So I have, I have some yellows here. Uh, and anything else? Maybe some blue just in case I need to, to mix some blue with... Um, oh, that's purple I like with my purple to have it more more purpley more dark maybe okay i also have just a thin paintbrush and also a jar of water just here so let's start what do we start with let me just take a little bit of this uh, very very delicate pinkish color first because I like to start with my colors sort of with the brightest colors first and I'm kind of going here with the pigment in between the, the stenciling here and there, here and there, add some more water mm -hmm. I really like it and here on the top as well and my color isn't flowing but I can spray my tag with water and I can safely do this because we have uh, primed our tag with uh, clear gesso as you remember Okay, so we have some of this color, lighter color, as a as a base here, and I really like it. I think I even may want to add a bit more here and there. Just you see how gorgeously the uh, the paint um, sort of makes the stenciling show, makes the stenciling pop because it. If you add water to it, it will go in between the creases and and flow in between those creases and just leave our stenciling kind of more visible. Really like this effect. Okay, really like it. Now I'm thinking I want some pink but which one which one let me see how this maybe looks is it pink or is it more orangey mm, definitely too bright it's like neon pink uh, how about how about this color but i would like it to be darker you know so we have this okay i'm going to take some of this to my palette and i'm also going to use some darker color to mix it with and so yes i do do some mixing but honestly i probably don't have to oh i love this okay I love it maybe even a little bit more of this one to the mix mm -hmm. okay a little less so I'm just going to take this one and mix it again yes I really love it but I do believe you you really wouldn't need to mm -hmm. you really wouldn't need to to do it to go to mix colors because you get so so many in this set this is so nice okay this color is quite bright but I'm not going to worry about this because I'm still going to to be using some other 
some other colors over it. Uh huh. So this is sort of just my my base here. Now uh, I think I would love to make it a little bit more muted. I don't know. Maybe let me try try to mix it with this one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A little bit more of this one. Yes, I like it better. More muted. I'm going, I'm trying to put the paint in between the creases of my stencil. Uh, but I'm not too careful now because when I use water, when I spray it with water, it will flow nicely in between them. Mm -hmm. Okay. I like this pink much more and now I'm thinking this is very vintagey looking so I'm actually thinking some of the browns so I'm going to add water to the browns I may need to refill my water bottle and let's see which brown would work here oh i also have these these look very vintagey so really you you have so many choices with uh with those sets mm -hmm. i love this i love this definitely so don't be afraid to experiment guys i love this i want to cover a little bit of the pink so i do have uh, i do want to have some pink picking through but not too much because we don't have too much pink on this tag we have more muted colors and this color is so so gorgeous mm -hmm. I love it and I'm thinking something more dark something darker definitely how about this brown mm -hmm, I think it will work nicely can you see yes a little bit of this nice and dark and cool it's a cool kind of brown I can add maybe a little bit of this to make it to make it slightly warmer to add some variation to this color and I'm just going to, to go like this here add some more interest add some more definition and add some more vintage look you know because with the pink it wasn't looking very vintage but uh, it doesn't have to at this point, you know, because what I'm doing is, here is I'm adding layers and layers of color. So don't be afraid to add some colors that you, uh, that you may not like at first, because you can always add more colors. And, oops, and that's what I'm doing here with this, with this brown. I'm just covering some of the pink, but you still have the pink. You still have the pink, you still see it. Maybe a little bit more here, just to underline the kind of our image. Why not, why not? I hope you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm working at the very strange angle here uh, just to make sure I can show you what I'm doing so I hope you see you see it well hmm? okay I love it now guys look at this how cute is this and I may even want to add 
just a little bit of black you know let me add some more water oh, sorry sorry guys for speaking with my brush in my mouth a little bit of black gorgeous love it i love it so much guys it's adding so much definition to this to this stencil stenciling and to this tag as well and a little bit here yes 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 mm -hmm lovely lovely maybe just a tad bit of water and just make the colors flow here and here turn it like that uh -huh, yes absolutely gorgeous uh-huh okay so i would set this one aside for a while maybe let's do something with this one this one is brighter uh in color so i think maybe i want to start with some pale yellow and i probably should clean my water oh no it should be fine mm -hmm. Some of this color would really be nice here and there because this one has like lighter and warmer colors so again I'm going mostly where my stenciling is I'm not worrying too much about where I'm putting my paint yet kind of going in between but also on the stenciling because this is the brightest color and it will make it will make the stenciling less white you know less white on this on this yellowy background mm -hmm. okay i really like it now what color what color i'm thinking maybe some brown maybe this one again yeah maybe this this or the one let me let me check this uh, this one as well i'm thinking i have a feeling it could be what i'm looking for yeah so i definitely recommend having some kind of palette because this way you can test your colors out before you use them because they do sometimes look different uh, in a pen and you know different sort of on your page wow i love it this is gorgeous it's a gorgeous color so we are going to have this nice brown which is going to beautifully uh, underline or you know make our stenciling more visible mm -hmm. beautiful beautiful mm -hmm. so these techniques these mixed media techniques that we're doing today they are really simple and i know that some people are tend to be maybe a little bit intimidated by mixed media maybe a little bit scared but i just want to show you guys that you don't have to have any actual skills like i'm not a painter i'm not a 
any kind of artist, you know, with mixed media. But you can still have fun and just try things out. Just, just try, you know, just try and have fun and who knows, maybe you'll love it. Okay, so let me take some of this pigment off from some places. Mm -hmm. And now maybe something darker. So uh, how about I like this brown here. So maybe I'll try to find a color that would look like it a little bit. This one, yes, I think, I think so. adding a little bit more water because I don't want my colors to be too strong I want them be to be more watery and to again to flow easily on my page I really like it yes this color matches the one that we sorry again. Sorry, that was my phone. <laughs> yes, so they, it, the color that I'm using now, it matches the... The color that we already have on, on the page, on the printables. Just a nice way of making everything flow together nicely. Mm -hmm. So these are going to turn out vintage, I think, with a little bit of color and, and I love it. I love vintage. Our uh, journaling cards and, and the belly bands from yesterday, they were more colorful, more bright, and these are going to be more muted. Uh, and I think it will add a nice variation. Okay, I think I want to leave it for now. So I'll leave it to dry. Now, uh, maybe this one. Mm, okay, so here I think I'm going to start with the same pinkish, brownish thing that we had we had already used because it's a nice uh, sort of way to get rid of the the white the stark whiteness of the of the gesso that I stenciled with and I'm just making sure my paintbrush is wet I'm helping my color go around the creases of the stencil Mm-hmm. a little bit. Pinkish brownish is this color. Pinkish brownish. Well, it's not the name. <laughs> it's not the name of the color. <laughs> it's just just how it's how it looks for me. Mm -hmm. I sprayed it generously with water. I'm trying to make the color kind of go all around here as you can see and I think I definitely need a little bit more on this corner. Yes, like that, exactly like that and we can make it flow beautifully from here maybe. Okay, now uh, what else? Now do I want to go with some purple? I'm just thinking... Do I want to go with... So let me try what kind of purples do I have here, guys. So I have this one. This may be like ultramarine. No, it's, it's not. It's just purple. But if I mix it with this... Mm -hmm. See, it's giving me a very similar similar color to what I have so I'm going to mix a little bit more of the blue 
for a little bit more of the purple mm -hmm. some more some more blue yes i really like this color so maybe hmm maybe i want to use it let me let me just check here in the corner uh-huh i just think i need a tad bit more purple than blue to make it more similar to to the flowers hmm i'm not loving it actually so let me uh and again, because we use gesso, you guys, you can actually dab the color off of your uh, tag with just with just a paper towel because it's flowing nicely. Okay, so I went back with with this. Uh, okay so maybe maybe some brown again maybe you know you don't have to have a different idea for every tag just because they are going to be a set an ephemera set so they should have some some uh something in common i guess and I love it. Can you see while I'm doing this how much better you now can see the patterns of the stenciling? I love it. I love it so much. So I definitely want brown in this corner too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Mm hmm and maybe should I leave it like this or maybe I would add just a little bit more brown here and there around my flower you don't have to only go where the stenciling is guys you can go all over your tack if this is what you what you like nice i really like it i think i'm going to leave it for now and the last one the last one the last one so again starting with this pinkish brownish it's it's a nice color although maybe for this tag i would mix it with some of this which is maybe more beige brown uh, added some water mm -hmm, I love it love this color so much it's vintage but it's not too like in your face brown vintage distressed it reminds me of Tim Holtz tea dye uh, oxide or tea dye ink it has this nice color I'm not sure how we're going with time. Those videos are definitely longer than those uh, trash to treasure videos. Um, but when I have to, you know, turn off my camera a few times during the video, first of all, because I can only film half an hour with my camera and after that it will just turn off <laughs> as it happens to me um, and also you know for the drying I just want to I just want to turn it off and um, and do it sort of off camera so you guys don't have to uh, see me dry things <laughs> it's probably not very interesting and because of that I kind of lose track of how we are doing with time that's why those these videos tend to be a little longer 
and also <laughs> I mean because I'm not a very fast crafter I said it on, on several occasions already but yes I sometimes see how much other crafters can do in an hour and I am absolutely in awe because well, I sometimes feel, you know, I sometimes feel this pressure that I should be faster, that I should done, get more done in an hour. But then I remind myself, you know, that everyone is different. Everyone works in their own pace. And maybe, you know, there are some things that I do faster than they do. Uh, and And then there are things that they do faster than I. And that's all good. I'm loving this guys. I love how I love how this is turning out. I hope you do too. I hope you do too. And I adore these watercolors. I had so much trouble with using watercolors before uh, because I only like had those those very small palettes with like ten colors. Well, I suppose 10 isn't very small, but it's less than 60. <laughs> and, and I would get really frustrated when I wanted to, I don't know, I didn't have purple, for example. So I wanted to mix some purple and it would turn out so uh, muddy. It was so frustrating. So, so, so frustrating. Now I'm going to carefully go in between some of those ridges with a darker brown and in this case I have what one one two three four five six <laughs> at least six different shades of purple from you know from a very dark one to a lavender or lilac so <laughs> Definitely, definitely great for for someone who just want to wants to have fun with um, with using watercolors. See how this is going into those creases. That's like that's like magic. <laughs> gorgeous. The stencil is also gorgeous. But um, this would work with any stencil, guys. So any pattern you have, just just test it out. Test this technique out. Also, I know that some of you guys who watch my channel, you are great at mixed media. So, uh, so you probably know all this, but hopefully maybe you are enjoying <laughs> Enjoying watching me do do this as well. Maybe you have some advice for me. I'm always happy when you guys give me your advice in the comments because I always like to say that it's not just that I am here for you. I am, of course, if you have any questions, any anything, uh, ask it in the comments and I will... I will make sure to to reply to you if i didn't reply to you then i'm sorry i probably miss your comment if you could just ask again that would be great but it's not just that i am here for you but you know we are a community here we are here for for each other so any time that you guys give me your tips and tricks your advice i'm very happy i'm always so grateful and also, if you guys see anyone maybe asking something in the comments that you know the answer for and you see that I haven't replied yet, maybe you would be so kind, you know, to, to reply to this person because it sometimes may be a few days or sometimes a few weeks until I get to, to respond to some of the comments. But if you guys see someone asking and you know the answer, that would be amazing if if you could help them out if you if we could just uh create you know 
this community of crafters who help each other out. That would be just so, so awesome. Okay, I'm just finishing here. Mm -hmm. I'm just adding a few more touches of brown. I want a maybe a little bit darker here and more water here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. I really like it. Okay. And I believe we will be pretty much done. I just have a few more things uh, that I want to do, but we can put away our watercolors, our mixed media. We will maybe do some inking around. Mm -hmm. Okay, I love it. I don't think I want to do anything else to this one. So I'm going to put my watercolors aside. Maybe I can clean some of this off while this is still wet. So I can I can close it. Okay, now I put this one to dry, but uh, or no, maybe yeah, this should be pretty much dry. Let me just check. You know what, guys? I'm just going to dry them very quick. Aren't they so? Aren't they so cute? I love how they turned out. And what I did off camera is I just packed them all on some coffee-stained paper. And so now I was thinking, maybe I will take some ground espresso because ground espresso or maybe walnut stain no walnut stain so i'll start with walnut stain because it is uh, lighter than ground espresso and i'll ink around them and if i feel that this is too light sort of i will go and add the um the ground espresso to this as well but I just want to add some some definition to these edges. Mm -hmm. I like it. I really like it. So I do think I may go over over it with Grand Espresso as well. This just adds a little bit more vintagey look, and then Grand Espresso will give me the the dark border, just a thin border but we can do it a bit later and i think uh, the last thing that we are going to do with the, these is just add some some toppers maybe some ribbons something like this maybe some twine just something to to make them actual tags you know well you don't have to of course you don't want to but I think we are going to do it so now I am just going to go with some ground espresso and this is it because it's darker you know it's probably as dark as those dark bits that we have here and that's that's what I'm looking for here mm -hmm. just a little bit more vintage look just a little bit more dark dark vintage definition mm -hmm. yes definitely definitely I love the grunginess of mixed media I love the messiness of mixed media and to combine it with paper crafting, you know, with collaging and stuff, that's just awesome. <laughs> it's just awesome. So I'm just thinking while I'm doing this, what kind of toppers 
I should add because these are quite vintagey, so very bright colors won't work here. But we can see what we've got. I was thinking some maybe jute twine would be nice. Uh, wow, love them. Let me see what I have, guys. So I have my big box of ribbons that I'm unfortunately not able to bring closer to you because, because it's quite big and I can't really put it on, on the desk here and I'm just thinking some of this maybe on one of those. I can leave it, leave it here. Uh, what else? What else do I have? Do I have anything that that would look vintage mm -hmm. or neutral maybe? If not vintage to neutral. Let me take another box. <laughs> Sorry for that. Uh, but I just I have another box with some yes, I have some um, eyelash eyelash. Oh, this could maybe look nice. Maybe on this one. The neutral one, we can leave it. I also have some sari silks here. Yes, I have some short pieces of neutrals, but they should they should work. What else could work? A little bit more of the neutral ones. So I could use the neutral ones and pair them with something. So uh, I am going to take my crocodile, which should be here somewhere, <laughs> here in in this mess. Where did I put it? Where it belongs? No, I did not. No, oh, okay, it's here. So let me first just punch some holes trying to go in the middle but not you know not necessarily mm -hmm. and you can add here this one maybe i'll go on the side here because you can see we have some some space here so it will just make make it interesting and then this pink one which is so pretty Mm -hmm. And you can use some, uh, you don't have to use anything with these holes because we made it on quite a sturdy paper. But I'm thinking I want to use eyelets because I just like, I just like eyelets, you know, I think maybe this one, no, not on this tag at least. Okay, now this here on the side, maybe on the big one, or would it be too much? No, it's be, it will be just fine. These eyelets are a little larger than the holes that, that I make with my crocodile, so I just have to push them a little bit. And just a regular, or do I want the flower? Maybe the flower actually, why? Why not? Uh -huh. <clears throat> and I'm not going to be stitching over them. I don't want to stitch over this modeling paste with gesso. Uh, so, okay. Let's see. I love this piece because it has a, lo a little bit of this brownish a pinkish color that we've used so how about I add this here and do I want to add a little bit maybe of the eyelash trim with it or is it too bright maybe it's too bright so let me just add this and I'm going to fold it in half and go through the hole like this and then just through this loop Okay, so for this one, maybe just a tad bit uh, shorter, just a 
spot, but I don't want to cut to cut too much of this nice color that actually matches the colors on the tag. And I'm thinking uh, for this one we will add something more. Then we have this one and we do have some purple here, so why don't I use a piece of the purple one? And this purple sari silk is one of my absolute favorites. It's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, then for this one, maybe the neutral again. And we also have this. How about I use this very light purple slash pink. Oops, sorry. Uh, for the, the pink tag. Love it and the neutral one for for this. And then I think at least for the tall one, I would love to add a bulb pin and maybe a charm on it, you know? So uh, where is my... Let me put this aside. So I'm going to take this... Uh, bulb pin, which is actually the same color as my um, eyelid, so they match nicely. And I'm going to pick a charm for this, maybe nothing too big. I've had, oh, I have those very delicate leaves, so I'm going to pick a leaf like this because it's already quite busy, but I just want to add a touch of something. And just going through the ribbon here. Mm -hmm. Oops, and at the band here. It's very delicate, this, this leaf charm. So I think I want it like this. Okay, very cute, very, very cute. So, guys, uh, we have our tags. We've managed to make four. <laughs> I really don't know how, how long this video is, so let me show you them up close so you can see all the textures, all the colors. Oh, this is so fun. Mm -hmm. Then we have this small guy, just gorgeous, and this one pinky one okay guys thank you so much for crafting with me today i hope you enjoyed this project and um i believe we will continue tomorrow <laughs> uh, definitely need some more ephemera for this ephemera folio that i'm making so stay tuned and yeah thank you for watching bye